Hi, I'm Christy Moore. I'm Harley Dufek. And today we're going to answer the question, how do I get started investing in real estate? So I think the first question you need to answer is, what is your goal? Why do you want to get started investing in real estate? Yeah. Because I think a lot of people see other people investing in real estate or people that have been doing it for a long time or late night infomercials or whatever the case may be. And real estate investing isn't for the faint of heart. No. Would you agree? I mean, it's, it's a lot of risk. And it's, especially if you're a landlord or you're managing crews or flipping houses, it's a lot of work. So it's not something that you want to get into lightly. And if you don't have a big enough goal or a big enough reason why, it's going to be frustrating and now, you'll most likely want to quit. Now is, now is buying your own home, is that investing in real estate? Because we get that quite a bit. People go, oh, I want to buy my house. I think that from the standpoint of investments, it is not considered an investment because it doesn't pay you on a monthly basis. You're still paying to live in your house. You are paying down your mortgage, so you're getting equity, but there's no guarantee your property value will go up. And um, like I said, you're paying for a place to live and getting okay. the tax benefits of such. So I'm talking about investing, getting a return on your dollar. So you put a dollar in, you get a dollar back plus a return. So there's a number of different ways that you can invest in real estate. Um, but to go back to the goal, what's the goal? Okay. Um, you know, is your goal to um, have a retirement and pay off your properties and have income in retirement? Is your goal to reduce your tax basis? Because that's also another benefit of investing in real estate. Is your goal to eventually become a full-time landlord and, and quit your job? Is your goal to have a side hustle where you make some extra money investing in real estate. What is it that you're wanting to accomplish? Because I think if you don't know where you're going, <laughs> you're going to have a hard time getting there. It's going to have right? yeah, a tough time getting there if you don't know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so number one, you want to assess your goals, assess your financial situation and figure out why it is that you want to invest in real estate. And from there, then you can figure out what your strategy is. So your strategy is what type of real estate investing are you going to do? So for instance, you can wholesale properties, which is basically getting a fee for finding a deal and, and selling it to an investor. You can do long-term holds, which is, you know, buying a rental property that you rent and you collect rent on a monthly basis and you hold it for the long term. And, you know, you have tax benefits and income in the meantime. You can also flip houses where you buy distressed properties and you fix them up and make them really pretty and, and put them back on the market and, and make a profit. Um, you can do short-term rentals like Airbnb rentals. Um, you can also do midterm holds, which is basically where you do a flip, but then you hold it so that you can sell it later for a lower tax rate. Um, yeah. So there's a number of different, you can also hold on to the property and, and refinance it, get the cash out and invest into your next property. So there's a lot of different ways to invest in real estate. And that's just residential. And that's just residential. There's commercial and land and all kinds of other yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, based on what your goal is and what your outcome is, then you can decide what your strategy is going to be. So for instance, um, you know, we talk about this a lot the, yeah. we, that I've, I've whole, or I'm sorry, I flipped a lot of properties in one year and I, I made a lot of money, but then all the money went to the government, right? Like half of it, all of it was gone. <laughs> it's so gone. <laughs> after, uh, you know, paying an ex-husband and paying, uh, taxes, it was all gone. So that was my realization that my goal and what I was doing as far as my strategy were not aligned. Because what I wanted was to increase my income, but also decrease my tax basis. Mm -hmm. And when you're flipping houses, that is earned income. You're taxed at that income as the same as your regular income. So you're going to be at the highest tax bracket possible if you use that strategy. Now, if you need the cash and you need the income, it's a great strategy. But if you don't, and you're really looking at it as a long-term investment, and you're trying to lower your tax basis that might not be the best strategy. It really just depends on what exactly it is that you're trying to accomplish. 
as well as what your financial situation is. Do you have cash? Do you have to use other people's money? Um, you know, are you totally broke? I mean, you can invest in real estate with other people's money and not having the credit, but it's a lot harder to do that. So if you, if you don't have any cash at all and you need some cash, it prob- you're probably looking at doing a bird dog or some sort of wholesale. Wholesaling. Or, or if you're licensed, a broker deal. Right. So, mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So. Yep. And, and then if you're looking to build more cash, like you want to build up your coffer, so to speak, flipping. Right. That, that would, or wholesaling. You can I mean, wholesale more. for a fee. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, you really have to have cash to do flipping because you not only have to acquire the property, now you have to do the fix-ups, now you have to pay the guys. I mean, you know, there's a lot of cash outlay when you're doing that type of, of flipping, which you can do with other people's money. It's just very, very, very expensive. And we're in a high-priced area, so if you're borrowing money, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So, um, you know, if you're really that strapped for cash, it's probably best to do a wholesaling type of strategy where you get paid a fee. Now, it's all price point dependent, obviously, but how much cash would one need to even think about doing a flip? Well, it depends on what kind of flip they're doing. But, I mean, let's just say a regular single-family home, you buy for four, you're going to need at least 10% down. That's $40,000 plus um, your rehab budget, which nowadays are running easily a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars, depending on the size of the house. So, um, and again, you can borrow that, and there are hard money lenders that will lend you the money. It's just very expensive. You're looking at you know ten percent, three you, points up front. It's a lot more risk, and that eats into your profits pretty heavily. So, in that right. situation, you might be better off just wholesaling that deal to another investor who already has the crews and the financing and, and things in place to be able to take on a project like that. We could comfortably say that you would need uh, at least six figures uh, in hard cash of your own liquid money to, in to this begin area. in this area. In the metro D.C. area. Yeah. If you're going to other areas where it's less expensive yeah. and you could buy houses for 20 grand, uh, different story. Sure. But we're, ta- yeah, we're talking about metro D.C. It's, it's definitely not a poor man's game around here. Right. <laughs> That's for sure. You need, need some cash. But also that goes back to what is your goal? Because if your goal is to you know, have long-term holds or, you know, rental properties or be a landlord that, you know, eventually you quit your job, you're probably not going to do that around here. This is more of a flipping development type of environment because what you're getting for rent versus what you're paying for the properties, it usually doesn't cash flow. You're usually breaking even or losing money at that rate. So it just depends on what, what the goal is at the end of the day. Um, and then and, also, and what is the uh, what is, what is the uh, percentage that you're looking for in in a long term hold? So the general rule of thumb, if you're looking for a long term hold, is that you're collecting one percent of the purchase price on a monthly basis in rent. So, for instance, if you buy a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, you're getting fifteen hundred dollars a month in rent after you know if it's worth one hundred and fifty after it's fixed up. So you could probably buy it for eighty, put twenty into it have 50 grand in equity position and then collect $1,500 a month in rent. And that would be what I would consider a good long-term hold. Okay. Something that you're making about a, you know, eight to 10 cap on your investment. Um, But it's a long-term play. You're not, that money is not, you know, you're not going to just be swimming in money just because you have a rental property because you have maintenance, you have reserves, you have vacancies. So um, you really have to analyze the deal from every angle. So based on the 1% rule, as far as you want to collect 1% of the purchase price on a monthly basis in rent, can we accomplish that in the Metro DC area? Is is that possible? I have a lot of clients asking me that. I, I have a lot of folks that want to buy investment properties or even just turn their own house as a, as a secondary measure to selling too. like, Oh, if I don't sell it, I'll just rent it out. Um, yeah. and sometimes people cl- end up collecting houses around here, especially for that, because it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moves in and out in right. this area. So, yeah. And I think that the challenge with making money on rentals in the Metro DC area is that the price that you pay for the property versus what you get in rent is nowhere close to the 1% rule. Because you're really looking at, if you have a $500,000 townhouse, you're generally looking at renting that for $2,500 a month. That's only 
you know, that's a half of a percent. That's half a percent. So, so you're, you're saying double that on your five hundred thousand dollar townhome, for instance. Right. You would want to see five thousand a month yeah, in which rent. You're not going to get around. That's right not going to happen. No, no, not here. Uh-uh. No. So, but, um, there, but you're saying there are areas where you can. Well, yes, and they're generally not in Metro DC. Right. But also, I see a lot of people wanting to take their primary residence and turn it into a rental. And I usually advise against that because generally speaking, the amount of equity you have in the property could be better used somewhere else as far as a return on investment. And you are generally going to either break even or lose money every month holding on to that property, hoping, hoping that it appreciates, which we've had years where things went up. We've had years when they went down. We've had years when they went sideways. So there's no guarantee that it, the property value is going to go up. So that's just, that's a speculation. That's not an investment. That's speculation. So if you look at it from an investment standpoint, what is your cash on cash return? If you put in $100,000 and yet you're making zero, what is your cash on cash return? Well, it's zero. Zero. Uh, you're not making any money. That's a terrible investment. So, um, Well, you, you can make more than that just keeping it in the bank. And well... Maybe. I mean, Sometimes. I don't know. That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> so I think, um, you know, depending on what your goal is, what you have, what your end in mind is, that's going to determine where you invest. So if you're looking for buy and holds, you're probably going to go a little bit outside of the Metro DC area. There's lots of lower priced areas around here where you can get the 1% rule. Um, you can buy properties for cheaper, fix them up for cheaper, get, you know, a good amount of cash flow coming in and get your eight to 10 cap on your investment. Um, if you're looking to build houses or renovate or do redesigns or add-ons, um, I mean, this is a great area for that because you can add on for 100 to $150 a square foot and sell for $400 a square foot. So your return is great. Your risk is also great too because you're dealing with long-term projects, you're dealing with crews, you're dealing with uh, construction budgets and you know, construction budgets never... Yeah, <laughs> they ne- you never spend what you budget. You spend generally twice, maybe even three times as much as you budget, depending on if you're new to this or not. Um, you know, your hundred fifty thousand dollar budget become becomes a three hundred thousand dollar budget all day. So um, that may not be something you're willing to take on as far as risk. But you could find properties that are in distress and sell them to investors that have the cash that have the crews, that have the experience. And then you can learn while you're earning money working with the investors and how they do it. And then once you kind of gain more cash and have more cash in the bank, you could do more risky investments. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. And I think a lot of people, it's really good to have an investment property or two when you retire because you need the income. A lot of people talk about nest egg, but they don't talk about income. Like, yeah, you can have a great nest egg, but if you don't make the income or the stock market gets hit while you're retiring, you could be without income. And that's that's a really scary place to be, in my opinion. So does more return equal less risk? No, I don't. I don't know what you mean by that. Well, so so we mentioned like investing around here and, and making making nothing, making mm-hmm. no return on your money and, and just banking on this this phantom appreciation that might happen right so so it but making more return on that same money isn't that less risk for you too as long as the return is real i think that we all fool ourselves and it's real easy to get rich on a spreadsheet um so it it depends i mean if the return is real and that's why you really need to know what are all of the different angles from real estate investing so for instance if you have a buy and hold you don't want to just budget for your utilities and and basic maintenance and property management. You also want to uh, budget for reserves, meaning having money that you put aside for when things happen that are bigger than your maintenance budget or a tenant decides to destroy the property or you have vacancies or you have to evict people. I mean, there's a lot of other things that go with it. It's not just, um, again, it's not a spreadsheet. It's, It's a constant adaptation of a strategy based on your end in mind. So, um, and that's why I was saying you really need a strong why for investing, because if you don't, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to quit. You're going to cry. 
you're going to curl up in a ball <laughs> and you're going to hate your life because it's, it is risky. The returns are great, but that's because the risk is great. And the less you know what you're doing, you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? So, I mean, I just took on an 84 unit apartment project after being a landlord and, and doing a lot of renovations over the years. And even I didn't know what I didn't know. So, um, you really have to You're learning it pretty good yeah, now though. You really have to um be okay with uncharted territory as well, but um having people in your corner that have been there before that can help you and advise you, that's I mean that's gold. You really really need people that have have gone that path before because it's it's not it's not just, "Oh, I buy it for this, I rent it for this and everything." out okay and that's not, that's not <laughs> so based on your strategy um that's going to depend that's going to determine where you invest so the first thing you want to do is figure out what your goal is what what your end game is what your outcome is the next thing you want to figure out is what is your strategy for to get to that goal and then the last thing is where are you going to uh to where are you going to focus your efforts um, to be able to reach that goal because it's, it, depending on your strategy, you're going to have to go to different places. There's, you know, very different outcomes in, in every different market. So I think that's all you have to consider. And obviously there's a lot more to it. So if you're interested in investing in real estate or, um, you know, you want us to look at some deals or you're, you're, um, wanting to sell your house for cash, we'd be more than happy to help. Just give us a call, text, or email.